I'm with Professor Peter Charles, who's the head of the Dyson School of Design Engineering here at Imperial College London. Thanks very much, Peter, for inviting me along to uh, have a conversation with you. Um, when you first read Do Design, uh, you asked me a really interesting and intriguing question. And that question was, uh, what is the connection between beauty and the hymn Amazing Grace? And I'd love to know a little bit more, particularly because of your background in science and engineering, technology and design, why you asked me that question. The hymn Amazing Grace is, is about gifts and bestowing of something wonderful. In design, we bestow or give to the design, hopefully something wonderful. And that's what I thought your book was about as I read it. It was all about bestowing to your design, to your venture, something wonderful, something beautiful. I think that's right. I think that the, the, the idea is, you know, everything in this world, as I say, quite often is, is man-made, it's designed. We have to arrive at a point where at one point it doesn't exist and then we have to envision it. So the idea is, is surely we should be able to make that in a way which is uh, uncommon in its grace, even if it's an everyday object. And I think I was quite intrigued by also some of the observations as you made about the products and sort of manufacturing. Um, is beauty a lens that maybe engineering and science should be using in its own unique way, perhaps, to think about what it is it makes? Engineering can sometimes be viewed as a, as a partner or a cousin to design. Sometimes the words engineering and designing can be used interchangeably. Mm. So I think designers are very aware of the importance of aesthetics and by implication beauty. So is it a lens? Very much so that engineers and designers can readily use. Whether, the, whether we're looking at products, services, systems or the design of experiences, I think there's a great message there and it's about going beyond just satisfying requirements it's about giving something that's truly desirable maybe even truly honorable again back perhaps to the amazing grace hymn mm. and is there then a language perhaps that um, we could be using more in our sort of everyday work as sort of engineer in engineering or in science uh, where the language of beauty perhaps is, is not used or... Uh... I think there's a huge gap. So you will be on to something here. We, we talk about rationale, philosophies, aesthetics, aesthetics perhaps as well. The concept of beauty tends to be reserved for natural beauties, um, things which are just bespoke naturally. Can we actually set out to do something beautiful? I think there's an aspiration to, worthy of aiming towards there. So would it be possible to teach beauty in a science and engineering technology school or even a business school or sort of, because that's something that quite clearly is not on the curriculum or our agenda at the moment. Um, what do you say to that? Can we teach beautiful design, beautiful engineering? Well, it's probably a bit like the subject can we teach? Can we teach subjects like creativity? Well, we can certainly augment creativity. And I think beauty will be one of these subjects where we can take where people are already at and enhance and augment what they're doing. And I suspect with time, actually lift a whole co cohort so that what they're doing in terms of their impact upon society could truly be beautiful. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, a really, lovely and interesting uh, response to, um, to that question. One of the other things that um, uh, has crossed my mind um, on the way down to, uh, to see you today was of course at the moment artificial intelligence and uh, automation uh, is on every news channel, is in every magazine, in every newspaper. Uh, there are people such as Elon Musk that say that uh, artificial intelligence is a greater threat to our humanity and our existence than maybe even nuclear weapons. Uh, I'd really love to know from you what is your opinion and your thoughts on, say, beautiful automation. If we use that as a term, how would you respond to, uh, to that? 
one of the challenges with AI is that the codes themselves, the algorithms can build themselves and transmute into new things which you may not have envisaged. Now that can be to your advantage. Self-learning code which constantly builds itself, defends itself, uh, transposes itself into something even more useful. Now that sounds positive. It could even be beautiful. How about an AI algorithm that is constantly improving itself to work on behalf of humanity, maybe even taking interventions in order to improve human existence. Mm. That itself could be beautiful. I agree, I agree. And, uh, and I think, again, it's very important perhaps just to reflect on that idea that uh, just because something new is coming to, into the world, and it quite clearly is, it's not necessarily coming with bad as a sort of a natural way. And it's a question of a, then a philosophical framework in terms of how or what is the purpose that we would like something to, you know, work towards. It's a bit like, how do you code beauty? I mean, it's a question that I sort of love to ask. And um, maybe there's one, obviously no one definite answer, but I think it's a very intriguing question to, uh, to pursue. You, you in your book, you're talking about beauty beyond aesthetics and beautiful ideas. So beautiful ideas will have many attributes and one can absolutely imagine developing code that is attribute based that could decide for itself whether, whether a concept, a product, service or system itself is, is beautiful and then develop upon that depending upon the human condition or societal condition at that moment. Mm. So could AI and beautiful outcomes be interlinked? Well, I as a crude coder can certainly envisage developments along these lines. Peter, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you.